it has truly revolutionized the way in which we approach the financial markets in india his inspiration is michael bloomberg and he is looking to build a similar ecosystem for the retail investors in india i take immense pleasure in welcoming him and just uh, to reiterate we'll have the q and a at the last of the session i'll be facilitating that please type in in the q and a section please welcome mr vivek bajaj over to you sir all right thank you everyone uh, so quick check uh, are you able to hear me yes sir you are able fantastic thank you uh, it's a pleasure honor for me to be amidst all of you and talk about uh, uh, my journey and how uh, i have progressed from being a chartered accountant to what i am doing right now and uh, in light of the current uh, theme of the today's uh, this session which is more of identifying opportunities in the in the days of crisis now i am presuming that most of the attendees are young students either from the mba background or from engineering background and i am sure that you will have lot of inputs you can take from my career i don't say that uh, i am very very successful but uh, i'm sure that you will have something interesting to be taken from my career so i will uh, uh, i will share my screen my presentation would be there okay so quick check uh, are you able to see my presentation yes yes we able to see fantastic all right so here we go you know so i'm sure that other speakers yesterday also must have showed this image to you that you know in the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity and it does and i really mean it because that's what i've been able to do in last 15 years of my career figuring out crisis and figuring out what's the best way to solve that crisis now when i when i talk about crisis uh, there are two kind of crisis we all deal with in our life one is the internal crisis and other is the external crisis right now the internal crisis is uh, typically the uh, personal satisfaction led crisis especially with people like us undergoing uh, advanced qualifications at some point of time we start feeling dissoluted in life and we go through those crises which is you don't feel satisfied in whatever you are doing so even if you are an mba or an engineer after a point of time you start feeling that is this something which i am doing am i getting the full satisfaction out of it so those are like internal crises some people do get the uh, midlife crisis uh, but some people do get uh, the midlife crisis in very early age depending upon what has been your lifestyle over historically the second is the biggest crisis which is i can do it better syndrome which is we all believe that whatever other person is doing you can always do better than what other person has done you know people can always create better ola people can create a better uber everything can be done in a better a better manner so that's also one of the crises which we all have to live with where we want to believe that we are quite capable if not more than creating what better than what other people have done and third is this self esteem you know i wanted to write the term ego here but i thought that let's not uh, give a negative connotation to this discussion let's talk about self esteem so uh, at some point of time you start uh, having internal uh, uh, internal crisis in terms of your self esteem is not getting met uh, there's difference between personal satisfaction and self esteem okay personal satisfaction is when uh you internally are not satisfied which is more intrinsic in nature and self esteem is when outsider people they don't give you that much recognition which you deserve which you believe that you deserve okay so these are different kind of crisis which we internally go through and you can add more depending upon your experience of life the second category of crisis is the is the more external in nature which is something like pandemic is the is the current form of crisis so everything is down down and out people are dejected there is nothing much to do but still there is an opportunity for online businesses so that's the crisis and an opportunity second is the regulatory actions and you know in india uh, ease of doing business is good in terms of number but at a ground level we all know that things are very tough because you have regulator for literally everything and then regulator is also very dynamic not in terms of uh dynamism in terms of their dynamism but in terms of their regulatory framework it's quite dynamic in india so you'll have to deal with them or regularly so that's the kind of again a crisis which a entrepreneur in india has to go through regularly 
and the third factor is the global factor now mr trump may come and he may decide that no no i don't want indians now uh, i have to stop this immigration part or anyone can come and give a kind of a thumbs up or thumbs down to the to the way they think the businesses or the life should be lived okay so these are <clears throat> two broader category of crisis and we as entrepreneurs and you know i'm i'm talking entrepreneurs why because i believe every one of us is an entrepreneur you can be an entrepreneur you can be an entrepreneur but those were the day gone the days when you were, you were in the job uh, because every job is an entrepreneur these days so if you are an entrepreneur you have to learn to find out opportunity in all the crisis and i think uh, i have been able to do it well maybe i was lucky maybe because i was proactive so let's see what was the reason why i have been always been able to do some kind of a work which is which is coming out of any kind of crisis now this slide is the most important slide of your life and you please register this slide in your mind very very clearly that ultimately there is a concept of circle of competence which is very very inward in nature that what is what you are and if you are able to realize what you are then opportunities will come right from there you don't have to scout for opportunities if you focus on your circle of competence circle of competence is something which you have a control on something what belongs to you your background your orientation and if any opportunity comes around that circle of competence that's actually the best opportunity for you i'll explain you this in later slides now let me talk about me because i think my journey will kind of give you a, a kind of a understanding of how you can look at yourself so my circle of competence uh, has been my understanding of finance so you know my my family comes from a financial market background my grandfather was in markets my father is in markets so i know that is there in my blood i don't have to put extra effort to find out what is my circle of competence so a your family background is very critical whether you like it or not and now i'm not saying that people who don't have finance background will not be succeeding in finance no i'm not saying that what i'm saying is it's always good to go back to your family background your father your grandfather your forefather and try to find out who were there what kind of personality they were whether they were aggressive people whether they were enterprising people or they were typically people who were more in a comfort zone of a job you have to dig into that to figure out what works well for you or what probably will work well for you second is the education background now i mean obviously i'm i'm addressing to a august gathering who are well educated but when we talk about people in large generally people are not so educated so obviously we have an edge you now now the fact that we are educated we already have an edge so how do we take advantage of that edge and the third is the passion because ultimately uh, if you don't have passion to do something for example i love to talk i'm loving the interaction with you so i've spent time on making this ppt and i have structured my thought process that's the passion because of which a proper output probably will come if you don't have passion and you are just uh, doing thing for the sake of doing then you are moving beyond your circle of competence now this this you have to understand very very clearly you know the, the most exciting opportunity lies in the virgin opportunity and that we all understand right that ultimately something which is new fresh that's where the opportunity comes the maximum and in your life also when you are taking your career decision ultimately the best best bet for you is to look out for an opportunity which is so nascent that you become the best in that particular opportunity and when that opportunity grows automatically you will grow because you are the best in that opportunity all right so you know so many people would be probably launching on to opportunities which are already existing and you just want to eat the pie of the existing opportunity that could be a, a point of view but i have always been look out for a new opportunities and whenever i became leader in that opportunity that opportunity itself grew and that led to a growth in me so my you know in in financial term i would say that my beta has always been higher because of the uh, new opportunities where i focus on now let me talk about few crises and opportunities in last uh, you know 15 years of financial market career uh, almost 20 years now so uh, and people who are, who, are, who like financial market will like this interaction because then they will get a perspective of historically how financial market in india has evolved 
and i tell you financial market is one place which has so much opportunity it's crazy i mean it's it's like an abyss so much of data so much of technology so much of opportunity to make money that if you get into this financial system very very properly then you will never be short of opportunity okay now what are the crisis and opportunity number 1 1998 i remember there was a crisis called us 64 crisis which was the the largest mutual fund of india uh, uti they had this biggest scheme called us 64 uh, which collapsed in 1998 uh, in fact uti has just opened up their ipo they are they are run, uh, running the ipo right now and that was like a massive massive crisis for financial market in india now if you see this zone of mutual fund industry from 1993 to 2003 the growth was very very flash extremely extremely flat not much was happening because of the crisis people lost faith in mutual fund industry and no one was interested in investing in mutual fund but even at that time mutual fund was one of the preferred mode of parking savings globally so why india mutual fund industry was not growing because there was a crisis people lost faith but globally the growth was still continuing so whoever established the business during that time of mutual fund lackluster growth they were actually a big 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 beneficiary of that particular growth story i also tried to do this so you know with every crisis i'll show you what what did i do and what happened to my initiative so my initiative was that i worked with jm mutual fund in mumbai for initial years for my initial learnings and thereafter i started my mutual fund distribution business i came back to calcutta and i started my distribution business in 2001 which i failed miserably and that's the first stage of entrepreneurship that you have to fail you have to fail if you don't fail then you don't actually get into the right path of uh, growth okay but there were other people uh, who took advantage of this the story and they are now big 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 uh, nj india which is the largest mutual fund distribution company in india uh, uh, based out of ahmedabad i think ahmedabad or rajkot i don't remember that clearly but yeah based out of gujarat and their yearly income from mutual fund distribution is in the higher side of 700 800 crores and they have a asset under management if i am not wrong of around more than 50 to 60000 crores so they are bigger than lot of banks these are the guys a very simple guys with not high fi qualification these are the guys who identified the opportunity in late 90s and took full advantage of that opportunity okay second opportunity and the crisis which i want to highlight is in 2000 when the when the uh, y2k thing was happening and there was a kind of a bubble in the dot com era so there was a risk in the financial system uh, cash market was very big by the time nsc was established and cash market was growing but derivatives were not there and without derivative the risk management inside the market system becomes very very poor so in 2000 derivatives market was launched so remember i told you that whenever there is any virgin market that's where you can get the maximum opportunity see the growth of derivative market from 2000 to 2005 market didn't do much it was growing very very slowly but there was an influx point after 2008 crisis and suddenly the market saw a massive massive interest because 2008 crisis trained people sensitized people towards the relevance of risk management during derivative products and thereafter look at the growth look at the hockey stick growth in last 3 3 to 4 years right so derivative when it was launched it was a complex instrument which needed participation from various market participants so if you were there and fortunately i was there in the right time that that was that is also a luck which i would attribute to if you were there in the market during that time there was a virgin territory available for you to take anything you can become a trader you could have become a broker you could have become a trainer you could have done you can start an exchange anyone who just did anything during that era was big beneficiary of that golden golden period of derivative growth in india so last 20 years has witnessed you know different businesses grown around derivative segment in india and nsc celebrated 20 years of derivative market so massive massive infrastructure development has happened in this domain in india coming back to what i did 
So my initiative was I started derivative trading in 2002 because my mutual fund distribution didn't, didn't go well. So I thought that why don't I foray into a derivative trading because it's a new market. And I was very fortunate. I made some money, but I was unable to scale up because, you know, derivative trading is good uh, loan man business, but you need a lot of money and a lot of resources like tech, etc., to scale up. So I was not able to scale up. And that is where I thought there is a need of an MBA in my career to think about how to scale up the businesses, you know, and I had limited, I, I already had a significant experience uh, backing me, which made me believe that yes, an MBA will help me to understand this whole art and science behind resource accumulation and then build up a business around this derivative trading. So the second stage of entrepreneur journey for me was, it was a partial success, but not very satisfied. And it's a very natural thing to happen that when you do a second business or entrepreneurial journey, you will have a partial success, which will reemphasize that confidence inside you, but you will never be satisfied because your aspiration will go to a different level. And what you will be doing will be very, very minuscule to your capabilities. Opportunity three, which came into the market was when the commodities market was launched in 2003. And that was a time when I went for my MBA and I'm in Indore in 2003. So from 2003 to 2005, I was in campus, the, uh, the fantastic, beautiful new campus. So we were the first one in that campus. Um, and those two years was phenomenal buildup of my character. I would say that a boy became a man, uh, man because of the MBA qualification. Partially because, uh, you know, we were a bunch of experienced people. Out of 120 people, I think 105, 106 were people with experience. So we learned from each other rather than learning from the ecosystem right there. And also, I invested a lot of my time learning about the commodities market. Because I knew that this is a new market. And if I at all have to create something bigger uh, as an entrepreneur, then this is a market where I need to focus on. So MCX and NCDX were launched and they did very, very good. And by the time I was out in 2005, uh, uh, I was ready with my understanding of commodities. And I joined in JM again as a commodity analyst with a less, much lesser salary uh, than what I was getting. Uh, in fact, I was part of the placement committee in I'm Indore. So being a placement committee, you can actually get a liberty of getting a good salary as well. No, no, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, so, no, so uh, we got a good job, uh, fortunately, but, uh, you know, I, I decided not to take that job and I joined as a commodity analyst. Um, and I worked there for nine months before I came back to Calcutta and I started my own commodities trading desk. Now, that was the aha moment for me where I was able to start my own thing. And uh, this is a third stage of entrepreneurship where you get that aha business which allows you to merge your passion with profit. For some people, this may come at the first stage. For some people, it may come at a fifth or sixth stage. But for me, third stage has been very, very lucky stage where I merge my passion with my profit. And then thereafter, obviously, I've been um, working on this domain. Another crisis and opportunity came in market when currency market was launched. Again, the same concept. Commodities uh, risk management was needed and thereafter currency risk management was needed because, you know, currency market, uh, currency market was very, very institutional market. Only banks and large institutions were actually active in that market. So regulator wanted to democratize the currency market and there was a launch of currency futures and options in 2008. So we immediately grabbed onto that opportunity. And as part of commodities, I also added currency trading and we uh, quickly became one of the top 10 players in terms of volume combining all the exchanges in India. So fourth stage of entrepreneurship is when everything you touch turns gold. And this, this happens because you already have a backup business which is giving you cash flow. And then when you start working on other related businesses, typically you tend to turn that opportunity into gold. And that's what happened with me when we got into currency. 2009, uh, algo trading was opened in India. Uh, so robots were allowed to trade in India. It was not the case before 2008. Now it was a big opportunity for me as well as a big threat for me because we have been a manual trader always. 
so converting that thought process of trading manually to automatic was always a very very tough exercise and globally algo trading was very very big opportunity so what i did was you know without tech and quant background it was almost impossible to get into algo trading so what i did was the only solution which i could have figured out is to do partnership so i Uh, ventured with uh, seven IIT I am graduates, and I was one of them. And we started a company called Irish Capital, which is now India's uh, top ten algo trading desk uh, in India. So the fifth stage of entrepreneurship, you know, opportunity will come to you if you have taken advantage of the earlier ones in the most honest manner. And this is very very important thing to understand that honesty, integrity. is something which you build as an asset for yourself in society and if you have done things properly then there will be enough people who will come to you to create business partnership with you and from here on i have been creating business partnership with various partners and people have trusted me people have resorted their confidence in me why because i have always been honest and with utmost integrity in dealing with them so you know dealing with seven co-partners for a venture is always a difficult exercise but fortunately we just celebrated 11 years of togetherness in this particular business again the opportunity and crisis you know when algo trading was introduced in india in 2009 uh, it was a new concept so there were not many talent available who understand algo trading you know and robots definitely are not glamorous robots are good to work with but they are not that glamorous so people were not looking at using robots uh, as a full time career so that's where we again identified an opportunity that we launched quantinsty which is now asia's largest algo training institute based out of bombay and we just celebrated 10 years anniversary in quantinsty again co-founded by team of couple of partners what is the sixth stage of entrepreneurship was the learning which i got that eventually after a point of time when you have capital in hand and when you have decent branding in society the forward and the backward integration will become the most natural progression for you and that's what you know reliance has always done from manufacturer of x they went and did backward integration and they started manufacturing their raw material and then they started doing the forward integration so for a business doing a forward and backward integration becomes a very very natural process after you reach a particular scale of your business crisis number 7 uh, which recently in the last 7 to 8 years i have been working on very very acutely and you know stock age and elon market as part of those crisis management the crisis comes from the fact that when i uh, run this business of trading i realized that you know we will always make money because we are a full time traders who are there in the market all the time so very very remotely we have lost money but who is losing money retail investor is losing money so that's something which bothered me in 2013 that why will retail investor always lose money so reason why it was happening is because they don't have right knowledge uh, uh, they lack uh, access to right data sorry the spelling of right says there uh, it should be right and uh, there are enough intermediary in market who have vested interest and they want you to do certain things in certain way so what we thought that you know this has to be solved otherwise uh, the whole inclusive financial uh, the whole inclusive financial market objective in society will not met so we launched elan markets again as co-founder with a couple of high profile guys um, in fact one of the person who is founder in elan markets is vineet patavri who is also an im indor 2 uh, years junior uh uh he's also a chartered accountant and from bombay and there's another person we started with so now elan markets has become india's largest platform for finance education with more than 5 lakh learners and 100 plus experts who have given their content so what's the learning from it the seventh stage of entrepreneurship is when you want to solve the bigger problems that's where uh, your core objective of contributing in the society comes into the play so after a stage when you have made money you have established yourself you start getting into solving bigger problems of society and that's what i have been doing since 2014 opportunity number 7 that 
as a avid bloomberg user i have been very very enthralled with the utility which michael bloomberg has created and uh, while i was reading his book bloomberg by bloomberg which all of you should read and get inspired i realized that there is no bloomberg for retail investor when i was using bloomberg it's an exclusive tool and very expensive tool at that time in 2015 there was money control which was very crowded and very noisy which i think they are still but still better than what they were in 2015 i thought why can't i create a product which should be powerful personalized and pocket pocket friendly for retail investor because retail investor in india is very very price sensitive and that led to the foundation of stockage so again co founded stockage uh, a product which is meant for independent stock and mutual fund analytics it has almost 1.5 million downloads and almost 500000 people are monthly active in this product this product has established a unique value proposition for itself money control is doing what they are supposed to do be in a media company stockage has defined itself as a analytic tool for serious market participants so the seventh stage of entrepreneurship continues where you try to solve the bigger problems of society now from here i see there is another opportunity which has come and i i believe all of you should look at this opportunity very seriously in last 6 months to one year or so there is a massive inflow of first time investors in india first time investors who want to invest in direct equity first time investors who want to invest in indirect equity which is mutual fund there is a huge huge inflow from tier 2 cities and beyond where the real india resides and these guys will come into the system and we need people to serve them to give them right guidance to mentor them and to take them through the right path of financial wealth creation from financial market so the initiative which now we as an organization is creating we are creating an integrated platform and this is the kind of final stage of entrepreneurship which where i am right now where this is a final big jump and you know i think the whole ecosystem is such prepared now that everything is supporting me because finally you have worked for last 15 years and you are worth it you have been creating so many products so finally you land up in creating that master product which will lead to a very very large value creation in society so this is the uh, piece which we are creating so a typical investor's journey which helps per per a person to learn through e-learn markets to analyze through stockages to collaborate through a social platform around stockage which will be launching very soon and finally to help people to transact in relevant asset depending upon the individual risk appetite all right so what's the uh, what's the unique value proposition which we have created in this organization and why we are different a uh, the model is freemium model and i think that's the future so if you are looking to create a b2c product then keep in mind that ultimately freemiumness is something which is going to give you a long term sustainable business opportunity and second is regional language india is you know 41% of indians speak hindi uh, around 17% speak english around 11 odd percent i think speak bengali around 9% speak marathi so if you see if you really want to establish yourself in india as a b2c company then use the language has to become a very very important part of your working second when you talk about freemium you will have to utilize the social platform to the best ability for example our youtube channel of elan markets where we create lot of interactive content it has almost 3 and 1/2 thousand uh, 350000 uh, subscribers our twitter handle has many subscriber our facebook has many subscriber so we are living in a world which is giving us access to users very easily so if you can develop the right content and create a pull for those users especially for the b2c market then your cost of acquisition will remain low considerably and then for you to push the premium product to those users who are coming into your platform will become relatively easier than people who are spending money to acquire the users so for for a journey i would say that being an entrepreneur uh, it's always there you have to wear multiple caps 
and you have to keep on improvising your skill set i started as a chartered accountant then i became a sales representative in mutual fund industry in bombay then i became a trader then i became an analyst then i became an entrepreneur then i became a technologist now if you want to discuss technology with me i'm pretty much updated on various cloud technologies on various data uh, trading technologies etc and now i am a digital content creator so i'm creating a lot of videos in youtube i'm very very active in twitter my twitter handle is almost 70000 subscribers my youtube channel is almost 3 uh, and a half thousand subscribers so as an entrepreneur you have to continuously keep on wearing new hats so that your whole journey of entrepreneurial and adding value to your stakeholders including employees keep on progressing to the next level as you want it to be all right so this is more about me this is this is more about how you can identify opportunity this is a connect point so in case you want to connect with me i'm available on twitter and now i'm ready happy to take some queries from all of you thank you thank you so much sir it was really really a wonderful presentation i mean from starting out to actually scaling up we learned quite a lot we have been receiving constant feedback over chat that people are really motivated by your words we'll be happy for a quick q and a i'll be facilitating those so we have a question from mr yash that there have been a lot of regulatory issues with respect to algo trading how have you been able to convince your clients about the same okay so so if i have to answer his question so there are two format of algo trading in india one is uh, you trade on your own account so which is a prop trading and other is the client trading where you facilitate algo infrastructure to retail investors now from a prop trading perspective uh, there is no regulation and uh, we have been able to capitalize on that opportunity in last 10 to 11 years and we predominantly do prop trading so we started with a small capital of around 4 to 5 crores in 2010 uh, uh, by establishing this prop trading desk and that amount has grown in last 11 years and we are satisfied with that amount we don't manage other people's money now uh, but as far as client uh, pro algo trading is concerned yes there are restrictions yes regulator is not comfortable with retail investors doing prop trading uh, doing algo trading so the best way to deal with that is join a trading desk uh, who does trading in prop account and then you can implement your algo strategies using that particular form i think uh, okay, we have one other interesting question coming from saurav goel so he says that there are many startups which uh, if they do not get kind of a head start in the very beginning they tend to lose the motivation so how do you keep that long term vision going on so uh, you know it's it's a very different and very difficult world we in a startup entrepreneur and and you so you know all of us want to do good in our life of course but uh, when we actually get into it uh, the picture becomes very very different because a the product doesn't come exactly the way we want it to be b the product market fit actually doesn't work well and c that uh, other people don't find potential in you okay so the only thing which has driven me is revenue and uh, you know i will always request all of you that uh, you know there could be a new wave of uh, doing business which is more value creating and just focusing on top of the revenue funnel which is more on users 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 you know at some point of time definitely you need lot of users but then if you don't monetize those users early then you will never gain confidence in your business and if you don't get the confidence then you can't scale up that business so yes uh, you will have to focus on revenue yes you will have to live with the reality that that startup may not have worked for you yes you have to have a stop loss and you have to exit that startup if it is not working with you uh, you know vineet patavri who is the who's the other co-founder of elan markets he immediately his mba from i am indo he started uh, a venture on online cat preparatory called fire up he worked on it for almost a year year and a half and i think he was ahead of time today you know an academy and other guys are doing exactly the same thing which vineet is vineet started in 2008 but he was ahead of time and he gave one and a half years and then he quit that no i can't i can't at this stage i can't and he kept on nurturing that thought process of being an education entrepreneur 
and uh, when he, he got the right time again right opportunity and right partner like me then he again came back and latched on to the opportunity so don't don't be disheartened that if you have started a startup and it failed let the world talk about it you please develop a confidence that you failed in your first startup that's a prerequisite of being a successful entrepreneur that is the learning which will lead you to go to the next level of your success ladder but do have a stop loss as they say in market you need to have stop loss in your career also you need to have stop loss otherwise it's a very tough world out there now okay so we had another question from mr you know shashikant that what's your view on new sebi investment advisor circular issued on you know 23 september stating max fees limit of 1.25 lakh or 2.5% au per annum so what are your views on that well i am not surprised at all that this has come because you know this is in line to global practices so is this that uh, people who don't follow what's happening in global markets they always get uh, surprised by these actions and see regulator has only one objective in mind that how do i make it cost effective and uh, accessible to all retail investors in india because last 20 years retail investors have not made money let's be let's be realistic about it so and obviously regulator also wants uh, a proxy of mutual funds to be developed in india because even mutual fund also is not giving so much confidence to regulator the way it used to give almost 2 years ago so i think this is okay we have to live with it and as i said uh, you know there are certain external crisis um uh, creators so we'll all have to live with it and work with the given limitations which we have in our country thank okay. you sir we have another question from ayush sena so he is asking like how what are all the marketing challenges that we face in stock exchange i think the biggest challenge is that there are enough competitors who have raised lot of money and they are burning money like crazy so the biggest challenge for a entrepreneur like me who is very revenue oriented and who always wears his chartered accountancy cap first then uh, you know the world is being classified into two people one who wants to make bottom line and other who wants to make top line only okay so my biggest challenge is that how do i acquire customer uh, at a least possible cost of acquisition and you know we defined a strategy there that we will be very content heavy company and will keep on developing high quality content so that people see value in our content rather in in our marketing campaign and fortunately that has worked for us because we get much more organic users than uh, the inorganic user let me just give you an example of the kind of content i'm creating a very good perspective so let me show you uh, uh, so let me let me show you my youtube channel of elon markets oh, let, 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 let me be here only so if you go to elon markets you see various kind of content which we create these are all free content okay uh, for example a series which i run in youtube call a face to face series where what i do is i record interviews of these people who are not known in market who will not be covered by mainstream media but i realized that these guys are good who are doing good work in financial market in some a, some aspect so i restarted recording their videos now the advantage of this was that i didn't have to put effort in creating my content all i need to do is talk to them casually and create a content with them second each one of them have a fan following and the moment i record something with them their fan following will also come into my platform that's a smart way of creating content like a content aggregation where you don't become a content creator directly but you actually onboard these people by giving them a platform which is which works mutually beneficial for both of us for them also it's advantage why because they are getting highlight here otherwise they would not have got highlight because cnbc's of the world will not go and cover them by the way now a lot of a lot of people are getting covered by cnbc also because cnbc has realized that these guys are good guys because we are covering them so they have started covering them as well the other example is we we recently launched this uh, concept called elon market school which is basic concepts taught in a in a very very simple language uh, with lot of infographics so people 
who don't want to see video who are comfortable reading also so these are the kind of content which we are creating how are we creating content we have a small captive content development team and we outsource the content to people because there are so many people in india so many people in india who want to you know sit at home especially the learned uh, married uh, women we have so many married women who are contributing content in our platform um, for example blogs now there are different category of blogs which we have created and who are writing these blogs ultimately learned married women these are the guys who are writing blogs and some phenomenal content they are creating for us so content becomes the most critical component of your uh, customer acquisition strategy or marketing strategy and then once people come to your platform because of its strong content then you should have that marketing automation techniques to push them towards the premium product i think this is long term sustainable model just paying 2000 rupees per customer for acquisition which other startups are doing because they are hyper funded i don't see that's a very very uh, good long term business model okay so sir, um, we have a question on you know currency trading in india so what's its scope and why isn't actually growing that much it should be so currency trading has always been dominated by wholesale participants like banks and you know authorized dealers and other guys at a retail level currency trading was never so famous because you know if you see smes uh, the companies who have currency exposure they finally have to go to a bank to take delivery of currency so for them to go to an exchange and trade derivatives and then go to a bank to finally take the delivery of the usd inr that's a disconnect so the moment i think exchanges will be allowed to deliver usd inr i think that's where we will see a massive growth otherwise this is a kind of growth we could have seen second point there was a gentleman uh, who became finance minister for our country called mr raghuram rajan now when he came into the power or when he became the uh, governor his objective was to reduce the volatility of currency market because his primary objective was that currency can't behave like 2% 3% every day it has to be static or if, even if it has to go weak it should go slowly or if it has to go strong it should go slowly so because of his policies uh, the volatility in currency market has reduced and if there is no volatility people don't trade so volume will only come if people trade and without volatility people don't get opportunity to make money that's why currency market has not grown and there are enough other instruments like gold or like nifty which are enough volatile for people to actively participate in them thank you so much sir uh, i feel that you are giving all sorts of inputs from your side and uh, i feel the answers are quite informative enough for the participants so the next um, question is from arhan he says that how do you manage your security and privacy policies as far as algorithm trading is concerned good question so when you are developing your own algorithms obviously you need to develop your own black box uh, uh, the the code which you write has to be encrypted and uh, so when you write a code in your algorithm system which could be a third party system also like a meta trader or any other third party or trading view but ultimately that system should be encrypted and that system will talk to the order management system okay order management system will be owned by the broker you don't own it but broker should not see your code so there is always a disconnect between the your algorithm which is sitting in your uh, algorithmic software and order management system so it remains part of you because this is encrypted and there are enough tools these days in market which takes care of your privacy of your strategy thank you sir thank you i think people are really motivated by your answers and your journey and they want to know about you more so miss anushka here ask what phase of the entrepreneurial journey have you enjoyed the most in being an analyst a technologist what part have you enjoyed the most well uh, i think i am enjoying this part uh, the most right now because uh, you know i i'm i'm doing exactly what i really really want to do uh, developing quality content uh, and uh, reaching to mass i think that is the high point 
so i also conduct a lot of workshops all around the country now obviously i'm not doing it but you know so when you go to say place like chennai and you conduct a workshop uh, with 200 300 uh, people coming and attending that and uh, you know someone comes from 100 km away and comes and just touches you and say that sir i just came here because i wanted to touch you and feel you so that i can also become a better market participant now these are the high point of your life which you want to uh, you, which you want to enjoy the most because you are making difference to people's life i think at some stage maybe you guys some of you will think early some of you will take time to think about it but your high point will only come when you are ad- adding larger value in society and when you make differences in life of other people uh, their money may not be the driver but the fact that you are making them powerful or empowering them is something which will drive you so this is this is what i'm doing and i'm happy about it but let me throw a caveat i'm doing it because i have already made my money so it's easier to say all these things when you have made your money 15 years ago i would not have started with this 15 years ago my primary target was how do i make money because you need uh, a comfort in your home as well right thank you sir i can see the chat is flooded with a lot of thank you messages to you uh the next question is uh, like what are your views on bitcoin i have no idea about bitcoins i'm so sorry <laughs> i uh, see i am a you have to understand and appreciate i am a chartered accountant and you know my whole my father is also a chartered accountant so uh, people you are not from ca background so you won't understand chartered accountant for chartered accountant asset and liability should match in bitcoin i don't see an asset liability matching so i can't understand in fact i don't know whether bitcoin is an asset or liability i am so innocent okay Uh, thank you, thank you for all the answers. I mean, that's a very practical answer to give. And uh, next question we had was on retail investors. Yeah. So uh, you also mentioned during your slide also. So, yes, I mean, why always do the retail investors lag behind? So someone has to lose, no? <laughs> See, I'll tell you the journey. So when a stock is trading at say ten rupees, twelve rupees, okay. and the stock is getting ready for a journey who is going to be the first person who will have an understanding of that that the stock is going to start the journey any guesses you can answer in chat guys if you have any responses you can answer them who is going to be the first person who will have this understanding that yes the stock will start the journey so people are saying promoters traders absolutely and- fantastic so the promoter is the one who has first hand access about his company that who are the clients who are asking for the product whether the product is selling in the market or not so promoter enters the stock at 10 rupees 12 rupees now promoter can enter directly or promoter can also enter through his representatives okay some people are genuinely good some people have their own own ways and means of entering the stock let's not get into that now after promoter has entered the stock the next stage of stock participation will happen from big wealth managers or big brokers who are dealing with hnis why because hnis are the guys who are giving brokerage income or service income to all the intermediaries retail investor we don't give so much money to intermediaries right so hni are the one who will get the next lot of stock which will be say at 15 rupees or 20 rupees okay so promoter is at 10 rupees hni is at 15 rupees or 20 rupees okay after hni has got the stock now operator will come into the picture okay who is an operator operator if you see it's a negative connotation but still operator is someone who handles the stock and i'm sure that you will see this movie wall street and uh wolf of wall street and other movies if you see you will be able to understand what i'm trying to say so the operator will take care, take that stock and start marketing that stock so how will the operator market the stock through tv channel through social platforms talking good things about the stock writing blogs about the stock and then obviously uh try to lure people to buy that stock so the stock from 20 will go to 30 35 okay and then there will be so hue and cry about the stock that if you don't own this stock 
this is the last thing you should do you have to own it otherwise your life has no meaning that's the kind of mass hysteria which has been created around the stock and at 40 rupees 50 rupees you see everyone will start talking about the stock the brokerage report will come tv everyone will start shouting about that stock because everyone wants the retail investor to buy okay now when the retail investor is buying who is selling who is selling please you can answer in the chat uh, again from uh, they are saying promoters absolutely so either promoter is selling or the hnis who enter at 15 rupees they are selling so they are making money but finally the retail investor is bought the stock at 50 rupees and if the stock goes down to 30 they average it more if the stock goes down to 15 they average it more if the stock goes down to 5 they will blame everyone that broker is sure exchange is sure everyone is corrupt here i am not going to be part of the market and that retail investor gets out of the market and will again come back after 5 years believing that there is still an opportunity which i lost and let me try it again that's a typical life cycle of financial market participation now it's up to you whether you want to enter at 50 rupees and act as a normal retail investor just looking at tv channels and making a judgment about a stock or you want to enter at 20 25 you can't enter at 10 because you are not a promoter you can't enter at 15 because you will not get the idea first because hnis will get the idea first but you can certainly enter at 20 rupees or 25 rupees if you do your study properly and then exit before retail investors are exiting that whole art and science of practicing in the market that needs a lot of effort lot of uh, rigorous homework you know it will take at least two years to two and a half years for someone to understand the right entry points and right exit points uh, price for a stock i hope i answered that question Definitely. That was a very, very detailed answer. I mean, I'll be even cautious as a retail investor now because the typical life cycle, it's more or less we follow the same thing. Okay. We, since most of us are from you know, college students across India, people will be joining and mostly will try to do something of their own. So they are again, very interested in your journey. So what was that first point that gave you the confidence to, you know, go ahead and what have been, you know, some really big risks that have affected you or you know uh, uh, under uh, gave you a less of a confidence that you felt okay this is going wrong or something and then again you came up with it you know the first point which gave me motivation let me talk about the positive part first and then i'll talk about the negative thing that what dejected me i think the first thing which gave me motivation was the fact that i was an mba and i knew that kuch nahi hua to kahi to naukri lagi jayegi to try kar lo so that was the first thing which so when i when i joined uh, as a commodity analyst in bombay so i had a job with jp morgan in bombay but i didn't took that uh, i joined uh, the commodities with half a salary why because i knew that this is a time where if i have to build something i can build i can't look at my salary at this stage of my career because i was not married i was bachelor how much money do you need as a bachelor anyway you don't intend to save any money right so why will I join a 15 lakh salary? Because I know the more salary I get, the more chances that I'll stuck with that job. I will never be able to leave that job. So I think the first comfort for me was that I am a qualified person. Kuch nahi hua life mein, job to lagi jai. The dejection point came when for first six months, you had no idea what you want to do. And then you have friends around you who are getting very high paid jobs. So you were kind of calculating the opportunity cost for yourself. And I think that's the most, that's a fraud concept which we have been taught in school is the opportunity cost. And those first six months were very, very tough because you get pressure from all around. You know, your father keeps on saying, Isi din ke liye tere ko tha kya? and then, you know, all those things which you get from around the society that why have you done so much qualification when you can't get a job? Because society will start believing that you are not getting a job, right? So that first six months was the most dejecting. But once you have your act right, then it's not a, I mean, that's first year is going to be very tough. No doubt about it. Uh, I have a batchmate, uh, Neeraj Gudgutia, who was actually part of the I-5 summit, uh, the first summit. And uh, 
he took almost three to four years uh, to finally arrive at his aha moment of business. For four years, he was struggling, and now I mean he is making a good profit out of his business, and he's satisfied with his decision. What is the quantum of profit is a different point, but he's satisfied with the business now. But it took him three to four years to establish that business. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That was a wonderful answer. I know uh, we are also starting out at the. We are currently at the age at which you started out. So, uh, people here are asking that what is that one advice that you will give to your younger self? I think uh, I, I have no advice to give to myself. I think what I've done is fairly good. <laughs> Nothing much. I, I don't want to change what I've done, but I can give you an advice to you guys that uh, that see if you have done your MBA or if you have done your engineering, that doesn't mean that you have to do job. It's a very very big misconception which is established by the previous society of our country. You know, our parents have been telling us. दैट बस पढ़ लिख के जॉब लग जाए तुम्हारा बस मेरे को उसी में खुशी है सो इट्स गुड टू हैव दैट माइंड सेट बट इफ टूडे इफ यू डोंट ट्राई फॉर बिजनेस इन दिस न्यू इंडिया फॉर कमिंग टेन ईयर्स देन यू विल नेवर बी एबल टू डू बिजनेस सो शर ज्वाइन अ जॉब बट पैरल स्टार्ट डेवलपिंग योर ड्रीम प्रोजेक्ट एंड अ स्टेज विल कम वे यू विल हैव टू डिसाइड की लेट्स गिव इट अ शॉर्ट let give let me give that one year uh and then leave then leave the job and that get into that one year give your 1000% in that one year i mean it works it works it doesn't work at least you will not repent that i didn't try you have to try because this new india is crazy this is the best time for us to build something you have to try if you don't try and if you remain in job you can be in job you can grow in job i don't deny it but how many people in job make very big and how many people in business make very big you can see the comparison the chances of doing big in business is far higher than chances of doing and job you can always go back if you are failure in business these these days there are companies like you know we love to recruit people who are failures in business because we know the pain point they will be able to understand about us and they will add much more value than a person who has been in job in some other organization so the earlier you start it will be better for you to accept that rejection thank you sir that was a really wonderful wonderful advice to all of us now uh, we have uh, i mean in the interest of time we have one final question uh, you know which is uh, from our uh, coordinator of the i5 summit she like to ask you so uh, handing over to avisha very good afternoon sir first of all i really thank you for sharing your industry experience on the strategic insights i think the whole team was really excited for your speaker session having our own alum here as a part of i5 summit 2020 so i had a small question for you so as an i am indore alum how do you think i am indore has helped you to shape your entrepreneurial journey and also in this difficult times what tips would you like to give to all the students at i am indore today okay so i am indore if you ask me uh, as i said that uh, i became a man out of a boy uh, in i am indore because of the batch which we had we had a very special batch and i'm very blessed to have that kind of a batch because people with experience were there so we never used to talk about study very honestly i don't think so those two years we at all discussed about grade or study we always used to discuss about everything except study so that gave us a very strong bonding with each other and today also we help each other in our respective business pursuits because of that so that's the biggest thing which i carry from the institute second is the fact that there is a brand backing you so you always have this more inclination to take risk because job to lagi jayega because i am indoor is now a decent brand to highlight where you can actually think about getting a job in terms of content unfortunately uh we were not so blessed uh that time to have in second year we got really really good guys but first year uh, we were still building up as an institute because the new campus was on there were some really good quality faculty members but i think the uh, overall learning which we got from peer group was much more impactful 
you know, then then the administrative staff. But uh, being a uh, having a brand like I am Indore is is incredible. There is no two thought that you can do wonderful work with this kind of a pedigree. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Sir. Thank you. It was really, really a wonderful session. On behalf of all of us, I would like to thank you for devoting time and giving us so detailed answers to each and every question we asked. And again, our chat chat box is flooded with thank you notes, and you know people are really motivated, inspired by your journey, uh, the milestones that you have highlighted, and advices that you have given. Again, from uh, all of our side. thank you thank you so much for you know devoting time us and talking to us thank you so much thank you my pleasure uh, in case anyone who wants to do anything in financial market and need any kind of guidance from me feel free to connect with me i'm going to post my email id in this chat box i think there's so much message in the chat box that this message can get lost but let me still try we, we'll take a note of that sir we'll take a note of that so i've sent you my email id feel free to kind of connect with me if you need any guidance uh, best will be to connect with me if you need any guidance from financial market perspective uh, may not be the right person for any other industry right now thank you so much sir thank you i just wish that uh, your mailbox is not flooded with so many mails <laughs> okay thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you everyone thanks for your time bye bye